Collaboration between the USAF and FAA ensures careful planning of low-level military training flights in sparsely populated areas, reducing civilian risks. Now, let's start an attractive journey to diverse low-level training grounds, starting from the vast expanses of Goose Bay to the challenging terrains near Edwards Air Force Base and the picturesque landscapes of the UK. On these dynamic stages, military aviators master the intricate art and science of low-level flight. But, if you're eager to unravel more intriguing details, stay with us till the end of this exhilarating exploration. The skies have much more to disclose, and we're about to show the hidden world of low-flying tactics and the fantastic prowess of these airborne warriors. Join us on this unified journey through the unseen realms of military aviation. Low-flying military tactics, low-flying military fighter aircraft bring an element of surprise to the battleground. Skimming as close as 20 feet above the ground during training and combat support operations. This tactical maneuver serves a triple purpose. Firstly, the surprise factor plays a crucial role. Ground combatants catch a mere glimpse of the aircraft at the last possible moment, leaving them little time to react before the plane swiftly departs. Secondly, flying at low altitudes enables precise delivery of non-GPS or laser-guided bombs for close air support. Take, for instance, the formidable Fairchild Republic A-10 Warthog, capable of lingering over a battlefield for up to two hours, utilizing its General Electric GU-8. A Avenger 30mm 6-barrel Gatling gun cannon to obliterate enemy vehicles and personnel with precision. Thirdly, hugging the ground allows these aircraft to dodge enemy radar detection by leveraging the natural cover provided by hills and valleys. The radar system becomes bewildered by the intricate topography, providing a strategic advantage. This low-flying approach adds an element of surprise and enhances the aircraft's effectiveness in supporting ground operations. Evolution of Air Tactics In the aftermath of the Vietnam War, when American aircraft fell prey to the Soviet Union-supplied S-75 surface-to-air missiles, NATO Air Forces underwent a strategic metamorphosis. Lessons learned from the harsh reality of those encounters led to a crucial shift in tactics. A newfound wisdom replaced the conventional approach of soaring high in the skies. Staying close to the ground to outsmart enemy radar is wiser. The experiences of yesteryear underscored the vulnerability of aircraft at higher altitudes, prompting a recalibration in the art of aerial warfare. This tactical adaptation reflected the resilience of military forces to learn from past setbacks and marked a strategic evolution in the delicate dance between aircraft and radar technology. Technology. The skies became a chessboard where proximity to the ground emerged as the key to outwitting potential threats, turning hard-earned lessons into a blueprint for a more formidable and adaptive air force. Balancing military training and civilian safety in the intricate ballet of American airspace, the Federal Aviation Administration FAA, takes center stage, wielding the authority to regulate and allocate the vast expanse above. The United States Air Force USAF, choreographs a meticulous dance with the FAA regarding low-level military training flights. A paramount concern is mitigating the impact on civilian life, both in terms of noise disturbance and the potential fallout from a mishap involving live-fire ammunition. The USAF meticulously selects sparsely populated areas for these high-stakes maneuvers, a strategic decision aimed at minimizing risks to the general population in the event of an accident. To ensure transparency and safety, the USAF and the FAA collaborate in disseminating vital flight information and charts, allowing civilian aircraft to sidestep these military training zones gracefully. The synergy between technological progress and the Army strategy takes center stage, highlighting the imperative for low-flying, high-speed training to navigate the evolving landscape of potential threats, where staying low becomes a sophisticated dance to outmaneuver any adversarial missiles that might seek the high-flying guardians of the sky. Challenges of low-level flight for military aviators As military pilots embark on the daring journey of low-level ground-hugging flights, they find themselves in an intricate dance with potential hazards, demanding split-second decisions and unwavering alertness. 
The Dangir's lurking in the shadows of these altitudes are as diverse as they are unpredictable. Pilots must navigate a complex obstacle course from the ominous embrace of electricity towers, wires, and towering wind turbines to the intricate ballet with buildings and various structures. The risk of a mid-air tango with fellow military jets or unwelcome civilian intruders adds another layer of complexity to their airborne routine. Yet, the dance floor isn't exclusive. Bird strikes join the performance, presenting a unique challenge at low altitudes during critical moments like takeoffs and landings. It's a symphony of risks that military aviators bravely conduct weaving through the intricacies of low-level flight with the skill and precision of seasoned performers. NATO's low-level training grounds. Vast expanses of rugged terrain stretch across Goose Bay, Labrador, Canada, creating an arena more significant than life for NATO's low-level flight training. Spanning a colossal 144,000 square miles, this aerial playground is home to only 30,000 residents, allowing pilots to embrace the freedom of the skies without the constraints of densely populated areas. Goose Bay is unique in its topography, which is a mirror image of the challenging landscapes in parts of Russia. It serves as a crucial training ground where military aviators hone their skills against a backdrop that echoes the complexities of real-world scenarios. Meanwhile, the United States Air Force, USAF, crafts its airborne narrative in the vast canvas of the California desert near Edwards Air Force Base. Here, the sidewinder low-level route unfolds, providing American pilots with a challenging tapestry of terrains to navigate. Across the Atlantic, the United Kingdom Royal Air Force RAF paints its portrait of aviation prowess. With a reputation for exceptional training, RAF pilots can be spotted gracefully soaring at incredibly low altitudes over the picturesque landscapes of the Cumbrian Lake District and the majestic mountains and valleys of Snowdonia National Park in Wales. These diverse training grounds, scattered across the globe, serve as more than just arenas. They are dynamic classrooms where the art and science of low-level flight are mastered. The collaboration between the USAF and FAA ensures meticulous planning of low-level military training flights, prioritizing safety in sparsely populated areas. As we've embarked on a captivating journey through diverse low-level training grounds, from Goose Bay to Edwards Air Force Base and the UK, we've witnessed the intricate dance of military aviators mastering the art and science of low-level flight. The evolution of air tactics, the delicate balance between military training and civilian safety, and the challenges aviators face create a symphony of risks in this airborne performance. NATO's vast training grounds serve as dynamic classrooms, reflecting the resilience and adaptability of airborne warriors. Stay with us as we continue to unveil the hidden world of low-flying tactics and the remarkable prowess of these guardians of the sky. Considering the diverse low-level training grounds mentioned, which location intrigued you the most and why? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for tuning in to today's video. If you enjoyed what you saw, don't forget to hit the like button and ring the notification bell so you never miss our upcoming videos. Your support means a lot to us. Take care until the next one and feel free to drop a comment sharing your thoughts. See you soon.